at Delaware, and I thought I would put some videos on to show everybody how to play the Stratomatic baseball game, the basic version, basketball, sorry, the basic version of the game. Um, here you will see components after you've opened the box and taken things out. So I figured first we'll go over the pieces, how some of them work, uh, aspects of the game board, and then we'll go over what you might find on the cards. And then we will do a step-by-step -step, uh, playthrough. So that way you can see in another video very slowly how the game works when it's put together. So uh, let's go ahead. Let's start with the game board. Move these guys out of the way. Ah, first, you have the game board. There is a section over here for keeping score. And part of the game pieces are going to be little red discs, and smaller ones have an H and a V for home in a way. And you can use these to keep track of the score of whichever team, visitor eight, home four. So uh, this is keeping track of the scoring over here. Uh, you can use a disc to keep track of how many timeouts have been taken in a half or over a game, rather, I'm sorry. You can also mark whether one of your players is being double teamed by the other team or whether one of your players is double teaming a player on the other team. Uh, jump ball results, which is the result of a 2d6 roll. And also possible injuries, which can be determined by using either the fast action cards or a d20 if you prefer. And I always like the d20. However... It is on the fast action cards. That is the game board. Let's go ahead and move to the fast action cards. Why not? Here are the fast action cards for the basic version. They are smaller cards, kind of like the hockey fast, fast action cards. but They really move the game along well. Um, on each, each fast action card, you will find at the top what happens for a play for home or visitor. So when it is, and when a player has the ball, you will flip the next fast action card on the deck. And if it's the home team, in this instance, he'll have a shot. Visitors team, an open shot. Um, when you need to determine what player has control of the basketball, you look to this section right here and it will tell you who has control. Uh, center, um, left guard, right guard, left forward, right forward. It also gives assists here as well. Um, and you can determine assists by looking at a player's card. And they will have an assist rating. And there it is. Name, team, foul shooting, assist, 19. And assist, right guard, if 12 or better. John Stockton has a 19, so he gets the assist on the play. If not the right guard, it will give you an option for another player. In this instance, the left guard, as long as his assist rating is 1.0 or greater. If there is a rebound, say, uh, takes a shot, he misses it. Well, actually, you would use the same card. Sorry. Uh, there is a rebound section. In this instance, it says the defensive right guard gets the defensive board, the rebound, if his rating is four or more. And you will see their rebound rating, offensive rebound, defensive rebound. Well, in this case, Stockton has a defensive guard rebounding rating of only two. So he would not have it. So if not, the opposing offensive center so the center on the shooter's team gets the rebound. It also has a second rebound down here if you need to, if, if something up here happens and there is nobody who qualifies in order to get it, then you have a second rebound section there. The very bottom of each fast action card has a number in a circle which serves two purposes. Let's say... Um, you get a card with a split. John Stockton, 
He rolls four, open shot, O for open, one through 15. That means if it's one through 15, he makes a shot. If it's 16 through 20, he does not. You can either use this or roll the D20 to get it. 17, he would have missed it. Three, he made it. The second thing it does, it helps you de to determine if there is an injury on a play, and if so, the duration of the injury. Any shooting player, if they roll 12, they make the shot, 1 through 19 in this instance, but if they roll 12, double sixes, then there is a possibility for an injury. You look at the number at the bottom to determine if there is an injury over here on the possible injury chart. Three would be right forward injured. And then you go to the card underneath it to determine the duration of the injury. In this instance, yep, that is the next one down. Three, balance of game only. So he's out for the game. That is how you determine injuries. That's what these numbers down here do. Um, that is the fast action cards. Let us show you the player cards. We have, and we'll, and the defense cards as well. Each team has a defense card for basic and also a defense card for advanced, super advanced. Um, you will note that each player's card has a blue shaded columns side and a simple black and white side black and white side that is the basic side this is the side we're using for this demonstration uh, each team has a basic defense so this is 95 96 san antonio's basic defense card which we will place right there and we will place the 95-96 Utah Jazz, where we would put them. So let's say John Stockton, we'll put him at left guard. Yeah, we're going to put this where you actually would see it if you had enough room on a table to do it. So Stockton, left guard. Uh, you have Jeff Hornacek. We'll play him at right guard. And you can see enough of the cards. Let's go a little higher there. I want to be able to see the cards. Uh, you have right forward David Benoit. You have left forward Carl Malone. And center for this is going to be a University of Louisville graduate, Felton Spencer. Denny Crumb's 1989 national champions. And here is the basic defense card for San Antonio. Now, uh, let's first look at how what makes up the player cards. Uh, you have name and team they play for, their foul shooting range. So here it says two through nine for John Stockton. That means on a D6, two D6 roll, if it's two through nine, he made the free throw. And in his case, 10 through 12 would be no good. So if he rolls a 10 through 12, he did not make the free throw. Next is the assist rating. And you'll see that comes in to determine whether a specific player is able to claim an assist on a play. Three-point shooting. And these are, again, all D12, uh, two D6s. Uh, Three-point shooting, John Stockton is four through six and 12. He makes it. So if he rolls, perfect. A four, five, six, or a 12, the three-pointer is good. There is also a three-point replay. And if it is nine, 10, or 11, then... It is reset and starts all over. And we'll go over replays in just a short bit. So that way you can see how that's going to work. Um, the rest on top, it gives height, it gives weight. Rest six minutes means during a game, he needs to rest for six minutes total in order for things to be accurate. Um, offensive and defensive rebounding by position and their rating. 
uh, shooting, which comes in, for instance, um, under the passing column and sometimes on the fast action cards, you will see pass to highest rated shooter for shot. Highest rated shooter, 0-0. Zero, zero. Hornacek's a two, Stockton is a zero, Carl Malone is a four. So he would be passing it to Malone, and Malone would take the shot. And then, of course, if he made it, Stockton gets the assist because a pass was actually involved. Uh, the bottom portions of the cards, we have the shot column on the left, numbered two through 12, and that is, again, a 2d6 roll. In that instance, he rolls three, F with a two in parentheses, which means he was fouled. And he gets two shots. So fouled in the process of taking a shot. And then you have other results over here. Uh, under defense, one through three, on the fast action cards, you may see um, opponent defense results. So here, if you're the home team, opponent defense 12. You would go down the defense section until you find the range that includes 12. 11 through 15, Stockton takes a shot. Uh, visiting team, opponent defense 18, shot results. You go to the shot results. Go to the range that has 18 in it, 16 through 25, shot no good. We're on Hornacek's card, 16 through 21, shot is good. Um, for the opponent, defense 12. Sometimes 12 will fall in a different place, say on Felton Spencer. 1 through 14 on his defense, F1. He's fouled and he gets a shot. So it is different for each player. But that is how you use the defense and the shot results. And then you may also come across a fast action card that has passing. In this case, passing 26. If it's Stockton, you look under his passing section in the range that has 26. 26 through 27 is a turnover, which means they're uh, double dribble, traveling, whatever, whistle blows, turn a ball over, the other team takes control. If it was Jeff Hornacek, his 26 is past the highest rated, rated shooter for shot. Gets it to Malone, takes a shot. So again, it's different for each player, indicative of their skills and what they did in real life. That is the player cards. Then you have the defense card, which is very simple and straightforward. 2 through 12, 2d6. How you determine whether you look at a player's card or the defense card, you'll also have a black die. Three sides are blank. Two sides have a D. One side has an X. You always roll these together when taking a shot. If it is blank, or if it is an X, you look at the player's card. Seven for Stockton is an X. X means the shot is good. This X, not to be confused with this X right here. This or a blank means you're looking at the player's cards. If it comes up as a D, then you look at the defensive card for the other team. In this case, six is an X, Stockton made the shot. Could be an offensive foul. If it is blank, shot is missed. Uh, look on Stockton's cards, nine and 10. He has an O next to it, which means open shot. So you will see sometimes on a card, you have a shot or an open shot. If it is an open shot, the O means he made it because it was an open shot. If it's just shot, O is a miss. So X is a shot no matter what. Blank is a miss no matter what. O is a shot only if it is an open shot. Otherwise, the shot is missed. And a rebound situation occurs. Um, that is that. I think uh, we're going to do a second video about the fast action cards more in detail. And some of the terminology you're going to come across. And then we'll make a third with a little bit of playthrough. So let's go ahead and call this video right now. Again, this is Chris, Stratomatic Delaware. Um, tutorial video one for Stratomatic Basketball, basic version of the game. Guys, thank you very much. I hope this helps. Keep on rolling.